That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. In today's segment, what I wanna talk about is the difference in how certain movements are covered because I believe that it illustrates how we're all being played on a regular basis and it is strategic. It is very well thought out, it is premeditated, and it is exceptionally nefarious. So for this example, I'm gonna use the Freedom Convoy. Now, it doesn't matter how you feel about this movement. If you think that it's controlled opposition, if you, you know, in order to distract us from something else, if you believe that it's actually doing good, none of those things I'm gonna cover. That's not what I'm talking about. What I wanna illustrate is how the media and how the leadership in Canada and even in our own country, how they are characterizing this movement. Because it's important because what they count on when they're, when they're playing you, what they count on is your short-term memory. And the mainstream media is tasked with helping along that short-term memory as they pick and choose what they cover, what they remind you of, and what they don't cover. So I'm gonna go with two left-leaning, obviously left-leaning uh, media sites, and then I'm gonna jump to The Blaze, which is more conservative, more on the right. So, Canadian cities brace for more anti-vaccine mandate protests. This is coming um, as of today from the Euro News. They're left-leaning. Look at how they characterize this. So here are pictures right here. You can see the pictures. Just trucks sitting there, right? So, you can tell by the language. The so-called freedom convoy. See right out the gate, the so-called. Like they're not really for freedom. That's just what they're calling themselves. Kind of like Black Lives Matter, but they're not actually for black lives. But Black Lives Matter was not covered that way. This is the whole point. Black Lives Matter clearly wasn't for Black Lives Matter. So it should have been the so-called Black Lives Matter movement, but it wasn't, right? So let's go back. This is, this is the con. This is how they're playing you. The so-called Freedom Convoy began as a movement against the vaccine requirement for cross-border truckers. Right, they're trying to diminish what's, what's instigated all of this. Of course, we know that it's not just about truckers after two years, like we know this, right? But they try to make it seem like these this just disgruntled truckers. And then of course, they're going to try to say that they're mostly white, not only mostly white, but mostly white men. It, it, it's, it's absolutely mental that you guys are even still falling for this. They use the same exact tactics over and over because they have no imagination at all, it's, it's fascinating to me, but has turned into a rallying point against public health measures. So they're against all that's good and decent. They're just public health measures where we just wanna take care of everybody. And this so-called freedom movement, they're just, they're just rising up to harm the people. These evil white men. Toronto police said they would have a ramped up presence in the city over the weekend due to ant anticipated protests. On Friday, they closed a ma major downtown avenue, which is home to several hospitals, fearing protesters would otherwise impede access. Entry was limited to hospital staff, patients, family, and people picking them up. Now, granted, this is Canada, but let me compare it to the same things happening protest-wise here, summer of 2020. They were blocking highways and they were all kinds of violent. <laughs> and they weren't characterized this way at all. They were characterized by our leadership in the US as, you know, we understand and, you know, they have to get out there and just because this, this country is so systemically racist and, and oh my gosh, they just have to push back. I mean, they have to, oh my gosh. So then they take it a step further. You see, they're trying to characterize these people as enemies of the people, right? As enemies of freedom, enemies of liberty. And then this is what I found really, really interesting. So here's how they're gonna fur further characterize them. So as you can see, they're not about freedom. They're against the people. Now they're gonna try to, to frame them as they're violent, right? And I'm gonna show you two stories from two separate, two separate left rags. They try to characterize them the same exact way, right? Evil white men, 
against, against freedom, against the people, against science, and they're violent, okay? Some Ottawa residents subjected to near incessant honking, smash windows, and harassment for wearing masks criticized Ottawa police earlier this week. Where's the footage of that? Where's the footage? I'm sure they, they could be honking, but where's the videos? Where's the footage? Where's the footage of them smashing windows? And that it's, it's specifically these, these truckers that are doing it. They're getting out of their trucks and smashing windows. Show that to me. Because I can show you multiple videos of Molotov cocktails thrown at, at police cars in the rise of 2020. I can show you them barricading people in the buildings and trying to burn the building down. I can show you them hitting police officers across the head with bats. I can show you them running over police officers with trucks. And it was called mostly peaceful. They're saying that they're honking and smashing windows and harassing people, but where's the footage at though? Where's the footage? Ottawa police warned on Friday of a crackdown on what they called an increasingly dangerous protest. How is it increasingly dangerous? Where are, where, where are, the, where's the proof of all these allegations that it's, that it's escalating to anything? Where's it at? It should be very easy to provide with that many trucks and that many people and with, with phones that have cameras. Where, where's, where's the footage at? Where's the pictures? You see? Now, the other, the other reason why they need to characterize this as dangerous increasingly dangerous is so that they can they can create a response. They know the response isn't going to match what's actually happening, but if they can inflate what's actually happening, then they can inflate their response. And then the agents of the state can actually become more violent and, and say, well, look, we're justified because we're just trying to nip it in the bud because they're increasingly violent and the people are calling for it. How many people are calling for it? How many? Do you see the con yet? I'm not done yet, check this out. Now this story's come from, from Reuters, and this is on February 3rd. Ottawans fed up with trucker blockade, blame police for inaction. Oh, the other thing is that they've, they've changed the designation. It's no longer a protest. They're calling it an occupation. Understand that language is very important. Once again, if it's a protest, it's, their response is going to have to be measured to that language and what we know to be to be a protest, but if they call it an occupation, now it seems like military action would be justified as a response because it's now an occupation. Kind of like Chaz Chop was an occupation, not a summer of love that they were trying to tell us in 2020, where people actually took over city blocks. That was an actual occupation. That was an actual insurrection. And it was met with no degree of opposition from local leadership. They just abandoned law-abiding citizens to this occupation, but they didn't call it an occupation. The leadership there said it was like Woodstock. <laughs> do, you, do you see? This, this spans more than just the United States. This is bigger than us. These folks get together on levels that we're not privy to because they use the same tactics. And I'm speaking in probabilities, not in, def not in definitives, but I look at probabilities. If a person is walking across a busy freeway, the probability that they get hit by a car goes up. Does it mean they're gonna get hit? No. But if I claim that they're going to get hit, it doesn't make me a conspiracy theorist because I'm just looking at probabilities. Do you understand? So what I'm trying to bring to your attention are probabilities. Look at the difference in the coverage. And then I ask myself, what's the most probable? Because they know what they're doing. They understand the difference between a protest and an occupation. And, they un and because of that, they understand the difference or the response that's going to be the outcome of designating something a protest or designating something an occupation. <laughs> Let's continue. So, as I said before, this is from Rudder. So this is a different, this is a different left-leaning rag and it's coming on, on a different day. But listen to the same language. Dozens of truckers in this so-called freedom convoy have been blocking streets, so-called freedom convoy. It's like they all, they're all given a script. All these left-leaning rags are giving a script of acceptable verbiage. <laughs> and they, they're not allowed to stray from it, okay? You're being played. Just, I'm gonna keep saying that until it sinks in. So-called freedom convoy have been blocking streets since Friday, forcing the closure of the main shopping mall in the area and local businesses and disturb residents with constant horn honking. Once again, where are the pictures of the violence and, and the escalating, escalating and becoming increasingly dangerous? Where's the video footage? Because 
He keeps saying that they're honking. He said they were smashing windows, where's the footage? He said they're making everybody uncomfortable and they're blocking things. That's literally the whole point. Because what they're pushing back on is a loss of personal sovereignty. It's not so-called freedom. Your vac the vaccine mandate is force. <laughs> it simply is force. It's, it's so, that's not freedom. It forces aggression and people on the right side don't use aggression. They don't impose their will on the other people. <laughs> do, you, do you see it? You're being played. Let it sink in. Let me continue. Okay, check this out. For six days and nights, residents living in downtown Ottawa continue to experience unprecedented violence on their local streets, said a city councillor, Kathleen Catherine McKinney, in a letter to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Thursday. So six days and nights, that's pretty excessive. It's a long period. Where's the footage? You're trying to tell me that in six days and nights of continued experience of unprecedented, unprecedented, like, that means, like, like it's hard to compare the level of violence to something else. <laughs> Do you see the hyperbolic language? The thing is, where's the footage? There's not even a picture offered anywhere in this article. Where's, if it's unprecedented for six days and nights and you don't have any video documentation of it, because if they had video documentation of it, it would be here. It'd be plastered everywhere. You understand that, right? You understand, this is all a lie because if they actually had footage, they would be, pla it would be in news cycle 24 seven. That's what they do. They poke the bear to try to tell you that this bear is violent. The bear isn't violent though. They poke the bear and try to tell you this bear is violent, but the bear isn't violent. What the bear is, is annoyed and frustrated because they keep getting poked. So when the bear growls, then it goes, see, the bear is violent, put the bear down. Where's the footage of all this violence? Where is it at? of all of this violence. Now, as soon as somebody does something, we don't know if it's even part of the convoy, maybe, maybe not. We won't know like really what's going on on the ground. We won't know if, if they could be planted agents of the state dressed up to instigate. I mean, anything's possible, right? It's not like governments don't do that and haven't done it in the past. They're going to get video footage of it. Understand that. They're always going to use images and they'll edit it to where it looks like the most, the worst thing ever. Just look at what happened in one six. They'll edit it. They'll find that one little sliver and they'll keep, they'll edit it to where it just looked like it was just huge. Ah. When really it's just people sitting in trunks, honking horns because they don't want their children to be held down. And well, you know what I'm saying? Now let me continue. Oh, here's something else that, that they're trying to use in order to characterize. I missed it in the other um, article, but let me read this. Ottawa residents, meanwhile, say their rights are being trampled by the protesters. Some convoy participants have been photographed with racist flags and accused of residents, accused by residents of vandalizing pro-LGBTQ businesses. And the other article, they also were talking about how they were flying Nazi flags and Confederate flags. Once again, where are the pictures? Because now, this is the, I forgot, this is the, the the, the creme de la creme, this is the cherry on top of the characterization, is that now they have to say that, that once again, these mostly evil white men are, are attacking these, these, you know, <laughs> these, these discriminated against and, and, and marginalized, you know, victim groups. Like, they have to do that, right? LGBTQ, rights of the citizens, you know, Nazi flags and Confederate flags, right? Because it's all white supremacy. White supremacy is, is really what's behind all of this. The push to, to not want to be forced uh, to give up your medical freedom. <laughs> the, so that was the last thing that they do. That's how they characterize everything, right? It, the root of all the evil is white men. They're not really for freedom, not really for you. We are, as the government, we have your best interests at heart. It's an occupation, not a peaceful protest. Unprecedented violence for, for five to six, six nights and days, something like that. No video footage to prove it. They're, they're vandalizing or coming after LGBTQ businesses. I don't even know how they would know that. Like, does it say LGBTQ barbershop on the outside? I don't know, but where's the footage? The citizens aren't even like, where's the footage from the citizens? 
And this is how they characterize all of it. So that the end result is going to be them being able to escalate their aggression. The agents of the state are going to be, are going, are, are going to be escalating their response and then they're going to use that as a justification. All of this. We're just getting bad men out. We're just protecting our citizens. If you were protecting your citizens, you would, you would respect their individual sovereignty, right? So you have to look at how this is flipped. You're being played, let that sink in. Okay, this is the last section I'm gonna read from this and I'm gonna move over to the blaze to show you another way that, that they're trying to attack and, and, and discredit and, and just stop this movement. The Rudeau Center Mall has been shuttered since last Saturday. Listen to the language. Since last Saturday, when hundreds of protesters not wearing masks as required indoors during the pandemic swarmed the building, the closure has cost 19.7 million in Canadian dollars, that would be 15.6 US in lost revenue, the Retail Council of Canada estimates. Do you see how they characterize that? These are the worst people ever. They're, they don't care about public safety. They don't care about you. And we're gonna step in and, and stop this because we're, we are your benevolent government and all we do is take care of you. <laughs> Seriously though, if you believe that, I, I mean, honestly, you deserve what you get. I, I mean, I'm a California boy and I mean, we just deserve what we get. We, we keep voting for people who clearly hate us. So I mean, like, what do you expect? When, when you put the monsters in charge of you, they're, they're going to follow their nature. When you put the scorpion in charge, they're gonna sting all the frogs. That's how that works, unfortunately. So let's skip over to the blaze. And I found this interesting because GoFundMe takes them off. And this is, this is remember what I said, the difference between protest and occupation. This is what GoFundMe used as an excuse for doing this. GoFundMe announced on Friday that it has yanked the Freedom Convoy 2022 fundraiser from its crowdfunding platform. Trucks and other vehicles have been engaged in the blockading of streets in Ottawa, Canada, according to routers. During a press conference earlier this week, Tamara Lich, who had been named as an organizer on the fundraiser, called for the elimination of all COVID-19 mandates in Canada. Another individual had been listed as a team member on the fundraiser. Now understand that they raised millions up until this point. Now here's, here's, the, just, here's the justification for taking away their ability to support their movement. Peaceful movement. We now have evidence from law enforcement that the previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation. There it is. With police reports of violence and other unlawful activity, GoFundMe said in a post about the fundraiser, following a review of relevant facts and multiple discussions with law enforcement and city officials, this fundraiser is now in violation of our terms of service. There it is. The lovely terms of service. <laughs> the arbiters of truth and the protection of all humanity, community guidelines in terms of service. Thank goodness we have those. <laughs> Otherwise we'd all be in hell. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, how you're being conned and played. Oh, after talking with law enforcement, we realized that this, this is, has escalated. It's not a protest, it's an occupation. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So what about all, uh, what about the black supremacist movements that was, that was funded, that were all insurrectionists? Not all, excuse me, I won't say all, but if you look at how many riots there were in 2020, if you look at how many riots there were, it was over 570 riots, over 570 over multiple states over in a span of a few months. And we had prominent politicians, including Kamala Harris and prominent uh, entertainers, bailing these people out, bailing out insurrectionists so they can continue their violence because it wasn't called an insurrection, because it wasn't called an occupation, because it wasn't called a riot. It was called a mostly peaceful protest. How can something be mostly peaceful? That's like me saying that I'm mostly a man. No, I'm either a man or I'm not. And I'm quite clearly a man, <laughs> 100% baby. How can you be mostly, that's like, what if you worked a job and then come payday, you got mostly paid. Would you, be, would you be given everything that was entitled to you? Everything that you earned? No. By definition, if something is mostly peaceful, it isn't peaceful. So, I just want to bring to your attention
that this spans more than just the US and it's bigger than Canada. This is happening everywhere. And they're counting on you not to be paying attention and they're counting on you to forget. They're counting on you to just listen to their message, which is why they move to censor under the guise of terms of service and community guidelines. It's always under the, under the guise of benevolence, but it isn't. It isn't at all. And all you have to do is just look at their actions. Judge them on Tuesday for what they do, what they did on Monday. And you will clearly see, you will clearly see if you are objectively looking at it, if you have integrity, if you are being honest, you will clearly see that we are all being played. So if, if I'm wrong, because I haven't seen it, show me the footage. Six days and nights or five, five days and nights, whatever, whatever that counselor said, where's the footage with all of that so-called violence? There should be plenty of footage, pictures, videos. Where's it at? Because I can show you tons of footage of rioting, tons. And they were called mostly peaceful. I can show you a representative from a left-leaning media site talking, I remember it was a black dude, talking about how it's mostly peaceful and things were on fire behind him. That's called cognitive dissonance. I know you I know you're getting sick of all these words, but there's no other there's no other way to characterize it. We're being played. Let that sink in.